Hey, we are on the weekly Torah portion. Please l- subscribe to this channel and give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. Okay, we are starting in the second Aliyah. We've discussed the many, first Aliyah many times. So now let's go to the second Aliyah. The second Aliyah starts with, after the sale of the Cave of Machpelah, and this is Via comes today, Ephron, and the uh, field of Ephron was, uh, how do you say it? It was. It went up. It went up. Rashi, in which Rashi explained, I mean, literally, it says it went up. Ashib Machpelah, that was in Machpelah. Shalifne Mamre, that was before Mamre. Hasadev Hamara, Shibo. He had, don't forget, he had bought both the field and the cave that was in it. Behola H. Shibo Saden, all of the trees that were in the field, Ashib, Behol Gvulus Saviv, and all of its borders around. Avram the Mikna, the Eni Benechet. Avram bought it, it became a, uh, an acquisition in the eyes of, uh, in front of Benechet, uh, the children of, uh, you know, the, the inhabitants of the area. Bechol Be'esh Ariro, that all who came to the tent of its city. So Rosh explains this. What does it mean is that when it says, Ve'yakam Sedei Ephron, that the field went up as it were? Tukum Ha'etalo, Shiyatsam Yad Ehed Yod, Yad Melech. It means that it went from a commoner, namely Ephron, to the king, namely Avraham. So when it, that means going up in status. And then it says all the people who came to the, uh, through the gate, what were they doing? The, I mean, uh, they were coming to be Menachem Avala, as it were, they were coming to uh, comfort uh, Avram, and they, and they wanted this whole acquisition. But it also says, Be care of Kulam, Ba'ab Mar Kulam, Hikneolo. In the midst of all of them, he made this acquisition. So it was a very public acquisition, the cave of Machpelah. Okay. And, and of course, why did Ephron, since Avram only asked for the cave of Machpelah, why did Ephron give him the field and everything around it? Because he said it's not, it doesn't befit such a uh, stately person like yourself just to have a cave. I mean, to have everything else, also everything. Avram's only too happy to do it. And that's why he gives him the 400 uh, shekel that he asked for. And again, that, that money was cash on the barrel head. Mm-hmm. The best could be sold, it could be used anywhere. That was the point of the currency they were using. Oh. It wasn't local currency, it was national currency. It, That's was, how, it was silver coins, right? Uh, it was silver, yes. But again, it had to be minted the right way. So, in other words, if I would get coins from, I don't know, Venezuela, and I would try to use it in America, I wouldn't get, I wouldn't get that far. Right, or if I even no, use Canadian money. Today, nobody, we don't use real silver or gold for, for normal. Or right, strange. but I'm just saying that they also had to be, it, but it had to be, as it were, minted. In other words, you have to know what it's worth. So, oh, but they trusted uh, the value that was stamped on the coin. They knew what it was worth, or however they designated it, right. they knew Correct. how much silver it was. Correct, or how much gold, whatever. Oh, but okay. in so case it's silver, you're right. But uh, uh, so that's what, uh, so Avram gave him currency that would be able to be spent anywhere and it wouldn't be devalued. Trust, they trusted that man. Correct. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so then it says, and after he acquired everything, and again, the way of acquisition was he walked around the entire land. Mm. Okay, so then, Kavar Avram et Sarah Ishto. So Avram buried his wife Sarah, El Marat to the Machpelah, to the to the into the cave of the field of Machpelah, Al Pnei Mamre, which is by Mamre, he Chevron, which of course is Chevron, still the same Chevron that we know today, yeah. and uh, what they call the Hebron, Hebron in Hebron, English, yeah. right? <laughs> the Eretz Canaan, the land of Canaan, yeah, yeah. and they, and the Torah has to emphasize that it's the Eretz Canaan. Why in the land of Canaan? Why do they have to emphasize that? Oh. Because it was said Bnei Chait. So Bnei Chait are living there, the sh- children of Chait. And the living in uh, Machpelah, we have to make sure that that is in Eretz Israel. So the Torah has to testify that in order to tell us that the Tzadikas who were burying was buried in Israel, which gets into the whole question, of course, although, I mean, was he going to take her out of the country? But it's also showing the importance of being buried in Israel, which will be a uh, subject for maybe a uh, lunch and learn. You know, what is the mitzvah and how does it apply today when, uh, when we uh, have to be buried in Israel? If we should be buried in Israel. Hmm. Then it says again, Vayakam bold Abraham. So then the field uh, was confirmed or went up again, uh-huh. and the cave to Avram, the Chuzer cover, to be an everlasting uh, uh, burial site. As a, okay, so, so when, when, when they say Yakam, they're uh, 
things go up. They're saying it was like, like elevated somehow. And that it was, was elevated because it went from a commoner, yeah. Ephraim, to the uh, to the stately Avram. And that's, so in the in the translation that uh, Arsko is using, so that uh, that it's implying that it was that it was. Conf I mean, the people understood that it, that that's a confirmation. Yeah, that, that's why he's calling it confirmed, right? Yeah. Okay, so now he buried his wife, which was, I'm sure, very sad for him uh, when he had to bury the, his wife, his beloved wife, the only one he considered a wife, okay? And then uh, what happens is, the Torah says, Avram Zakain. Avram was old, okay? And Bab Yamim, he, came, he was coming into his days, that's well on in years, they say. Hashem beirach at Avram Bakol, and Hashem blessed Avram with everything. Yeah. Rashi says, "What does it mean, Bakol? Bakol, Bakol, all of the Gratcha Bain. If you take the numerical value of Bakol, which is uh, twenty fifty-two, yeah. then you'll have the numerical value. The another word, Bain, son. When he said he blessed him with everything, that was meant he blessed him with a son. Yeah. Okay, that's how Rashi interprets that." And now, once he had a son, he had Sarich Lasio Isha. He had to get him married off. Ah, okay. Ah. He had a son, he had to marry him off. Okay. And now, what happens is he suddenly woke up, as it were. He says, the, the, the rabbi say that he realized that if Yitzchak would have uh, died at the Akeda, he would have had to start all over again, and he wouldn't have had grand, and he wouldn't have had grandchildren. So now he said, "Okay, so I have to marry off my son." That's from previous parsha mm -hmm. when we hear about Rivka. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that is really when he starts to think, "Oh my God, I could have just ended off the line before it even began." Okay, so that's uh, now he's getting old, and so he. And this is also important to know because since he's such an elderly person, he doesn't know when he's going to die. And he decides, I, I, certainly his wife has passed away. And so she passed away at 127, which means yeah. he was 137, because there were 10 years difference. Yeah. So he said, I, I don't know how long, he, did, he said, I don't know how long I'm gonna live. Yeah. So rather, let's, uh, let's get worried about getting this done. So the Yom Avram El Avdo Zukhan Beito. So Avram says to his servant, who was the elder of the household, and he says, Hamosh, and what was his elder? Hamosh Bechol Shiloh. He ruled in everything that he had. In other words, he was in charge. And he says, Simna Diyadcha Tachitrechi. Put now, or please put your hand under my thigh. And what does it mean? So Rashi explains, Lefisha Nishba, because he wanted to make a Shavuah. He wanted him to swear on oath, to make an oath to him. Sarah, so what happens? And what he want to make when he wants him to swear, Rashi explains, Sarah she told she told Biado Khafitz Shal Mitzvah. So you're going to say for Torah or to fill in. So you're supposed to pick, take something up in your hands, like a say for Torah or to fill in, and then make a shvuah, which is why in the old uh, Perry Mason shows you would see put your hand on the Bible and swear before, uh, do you swear to tell the truth, whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Used to say that. Okay. Yeah. So they say yes, yeah, but they're putting they, the hand on the Bible today. That no longer exists. You just have to uh, uh, affirm or something like that. You just say, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, or nothing but the truth? And that's it. Yeah. There's no Bible, that, and they tell you raise your hand. I oh. think further what the uh, I think I don't even know if they say raise your hand anymore. The swearing the president, or the, I think uh, the Supreme Court just I think uh, it, it very, they still they still do do that. I, I think. But then you have to bring out their Bible. Huh? Then, it, yeah. The, uh, if it would yeah. be, uh, you could either bring up the Jewish Bible, you could bring up the Christian yeah. Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, which is fairly strange that they would do that. And this certainly in the yeah. in the country today, where we've moved away so much from from religion, yeah. and uh, we want to be sensitive to everything. So it's strange that they would still do that today. But nonetheless, it shows that in God we trust, the rest pay cash, sort of thing. You know, <laughs> we still we still have to show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it was, it was crazy. It, uh, to, just to go off ta uh, topic for one second, I saw something from, uh, I don't know who posted it, I forget who posted it, but it was this, the guy, it was some sort of priest preacher who was saying the reason that the, all this is happening, that the people were shot, is because 
we threw God out of the system. And I was thinking, please shut your mouth. <laughs> stop, stop giving reasons to something we're not going to understand. Jerry you know, got for the yeah, but, uh, but all these guys, they want to get involved with something that we just, we don't know what God's plan yeah, is. Yeah. We know, I, I affirm that God has a plan, but I don't know what that plan is. I don't know why those people had to die, and I'm not going to start guessing why they yeah, had to die. Yeah. They were true martyrs who died praying to God. Yeah. I mean, you can't be more of a martyr than that. So, but like I guess say, people want to get all involved in these things, but so, but nonetheless, when you take a swear, when you, when you swear, you're supposed to take that with you. So what's he doing under his thigh? So it says, Amila, Haita Mitzvah Rishon The Mila, his bris Mila, was his, the first Mitzvah. And Ba'alo, Ali Deit Sa'ar. And it was, it took him, it was a lot of a distress when he did it. Vaita Chaviva, and as a result, it was very dear to him. So you can ask, why didn't he tell him to hold, put your hand on your own thigh? In other words, if you just touch ah. the mila. Ah. So Eliezer also had a bris mila. <laughs> yeah. ah. So that's why they have to say, because it was dear to him, this, this whole thing. Uh, interestingly, and, I, and uh, I like doing this every once in a while, a background from my, my college years when I was still learning, learning epicourses. So archaeologically, they have found, I think it was through archaeology, they found that this was the way to make a shvuaf in the old days. They would put their hand under the thigh of the person making the oath to. In other words, if Reuven wants Shimon to make an oath, they would have, Shimon would have to put his hand under Reuven's thigh. But that was normal. Mm -hmm. That was a normal way of making an oath mm -hmm. or a pact. You put your hand, so, so it's interesting that we're seeing this we're giving a reason. It was for the bris mila. They don't give a reason in archaeology. They never give a reason for it, but they said they. I remember uh, seeing that or learning that in school, and they wanted to then try to say what the story was really about. But they never. I. They never explained why. In those days, they did it. Archaeology didn't explain that, so yeah. it would still it would beg the question. To explain this right here. Yeah, in the that's what archaeology does. Archaeology looks in the Torah. Oh, they and, say they found other And they say, oh, we found, we found some uh, Hammurabi's okay. code or something like that. Uh, and this uh, is what they did. But again, it doesn't say yeah. why they did it. That's the problem. It's, they're verifying that this uh, is true. By the way, that's what happens. You verify, even though you, do, you want to, again, I don't want to get caught in these things, but even though they try to go the other way and prove that the Bible didn't happen, one, every once in a while they stumble oh. upon this and they prove that, by, that the story is based upon fact, if you will. And why is it fact? Because we have non-Jewish sources that have the same information. Okay, yeah, that's why they, so they it verifies it. In right, to... but, but they don't want, right. Because it doesn't say, unless I'm, I could be wrong, but I don't think it explains why that was a way to make a shavuah yeah. in the court of Hammurabi. Yeah. But it was interesting. Uh, but I remember that, and it was uh, when I used to write up curriculums with my master's degree. So I used to have to write up all these things of what I would do and how I would teach this stuff. And of course, you, you learn you write down anything in order to pass a course. But I would remember all those upper courses that I learned, and I would say, oh, you could learn this, you could do this. Okay, fine. <laughs> but uh, it's many years ago, but like I said, I don't think that they gave a reason for it. Yeah. The, uh, you'd have to ask your biblical scholars in town if, they, if the code actually said why. Mm -hmm. But Rashi is explaining why, why they had to do it. Okay. So he says, and I will cause you to swear, and I will make you swear, okay? By God, the King of the heavens, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth. Uh, so, oh, okay. Just remember that those that language, that pair. God of heaven, God of earth. That you will not take a wife from my son from the daughters of the Canaanites. That I am dwelling in its midst, in other words, in the land. I don't want you to uh, marry my kid to these girls. Okay, well, the reason is because uh, uh, Canaan is cursed, 
by by Noah, so the uh, whole family of Canaan is cursed, and there's supposed to be a vadim of slaves. So now, since he is he is Baruch as it were, uh, he's blessed by Hashem. He and his family are blessed. So you can't uh, marry, you can't intermarry as it were, the blessed with the cursed. Okay, so that's that's why he was saying, I don't want you to marry these girls. Also, they were steeped in idolatry. So now his son would have to as it were, convert her uh, to, get to, to, to carry on his mission. So he said, I don't want you to marry. I want you to make a shvua that you're not going to marry. You're not going to uh, have these two get married. Rather, rather you should go to my, my land and my birthplace. And you will take from uh, a wife from my son Yitzchak. That's what I want you to do. I want you to go back to my father's house my, my land, my, uh, my birthplace, my family is there. You're going to go to my family and you're going to pick up uh, somebody there. So he's, he's asking him uh, to make this uh, Shavua. Now he's afraid he's going to die before. Uh, yes. Huh. Yes. So, and he says, in case this doesn't work out, so then uh, my son will listen to my last wishes. Huh. He could have said it to Yitzchak, but the problem is he huh. doesn't want Yitzchak to leave Eretz Yisrael. He doesn't want him to leave the land. He's going to say that. He doesn't want him to go out and search. Right. He doesn't want him to search, but he so he's sending his servant, and he knows that if, he knows that Yitzchak, even if uh, Avram would die, he knows that Yitzchak would listen to his father's dying wishes, and since he and since his father trusted Eliezer, he would thus trust Eliezer. So he already knew that was going to be fine. And then I said. Vayomra Ela uh Vayomra a love. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I missed the line. Vio yeah, okay. Vayomra Elava Evit. So the servant said to him, Ulai Lotave uh Ulai Lotaveh Isha. Perhaps, perhaps the woman will not desire the Lechad Acharai to go after me, Ella Arsazo, to this land. Mm -hmm. The woman doesn't want to leave her parents. What, what am I supposed to do? Hashev, Hashev, Bincha, Ella Arsashi, Satmisham. Should I return your son to the land that you came from? Mm -hmm. Oh, so he tells her, look, you want me to go for, to find a Shudach for your wife, for your son. Very nice. Uh, and you want me to go to your family. I'm going to go, I'm going to try to get a wife for your family. But, Let's assume that the wife doesn't want to leave. It wouldn't be the first time that a wife doesn't want to leave her parents, mm -hmm. right? I mean, a woman doesn't want to leave her parents. The woman, why, by the way, why doesn't a woman want to leave her parents' area? Your, your babysitters. <laughs> okay, let's face it. <laughs> That's why when, uh, you know, when the kid has, when you have a baby, so who comes down is normally the, the wife's parents who yeah, stay yeah, yeah. for a while. It's normally not the husband's parents who stay for a while. At least yeah. in my experience, it's always been that way. Or, or, their own daughter, yeah. right, or we send the, the daughter to the parents' home, yeah. right, and stay there for uh, six, seven weeks. And uh, I, I've never seen that, but mm. I've heard of it, yeah. heard of, that they go to the mother's house and they sit there, yeah. okay. First, I think it's a way to, to uh, I understand the parents coming, I understand the grandparents coming to help the first yeah. week, even yeah. into the second. Yeah. After that, it's time to go home and let us figure out what we have to do on our own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Personally, that's how I feel. And that's what happened with us too, you know. You know? But, uh, so he says, uh, Avram answers, Ve'yom love Avram. Avram said to him, he shamir be very, be guard yourself against this, be careful. Pentashiva uh, Pinishama, lest you return my son there. Now, watch what happens. Remember, we said originally, he, when he was making, when he was adjuring Eliezer, he said, Shemayim, Here he only says, in Zion, he says, Hashem, Elokea Shemayim, the God of the heavens. Yeah. Why didn't he say the God of the land at that point? Ah. So, uh, and then he continues, I'll just finish the apostle again. That took me. From the house of my father, and from the land, uh, from the, uh, from the land of my birthplace, but she did barely, and that spoke to me. and that swore to me, saying, to your children, attain at Ha'ar says, what I will give this land. Who He will send his malach, his messenger before you, and you will take a woman 
a wife for my son there. So Rashi says, why didn't he continue on to say So he says, Rashi says, he didn't say the, land, uh, the God of the land. Why? Uh, because so he uh, so he, he said to him, now, after all I've been traveling, who will Hashem of Hashem is recognized as the God of the heavens and the, uh, and the, the, the land. Because I've conditioned people to realize that. In other words, people, I think this very day, have a problem with the God running the world. Yeah. They don't have a problem with God up in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? They see Created God. The world, cut everybody loose, that's all. Right. Yeah. God is up in heaven. Yeah. He's up there with the angels. He's bowling. He's doing whatever he's doing. <laughs> he has nothing to do with this world down here. And he has his malachim to do whatever they want. Okay. That is really how some people think. They see a guy in the white beard, whatever they, they really have experiences. But when it comes down to here, they have a hard time contemplating that God is on this world too, or if you will. Uh, and that's what Avram was saying. I caused people to make that realization. So mm-hmm. now God is recognized as the God of heaven and the God down here. Uh-huh. And it's the same God. Uh-huh. There's no intermediaries. Aval, but, Kishla but when I left my father's house, he was only known as the God of heaven and not the God of the world. Because people of the world didn't recognize him. And his name was not known, was not normal, not recognized, uh, was not regular, was not, uh, yeah, not normalized in the, in the land. So, and that's what I'm saying. I think, I think we've gone back to that. I really believe, think that many people have gone back to that old model of God, they don't see it as God running the world on a daily basis. They see it as yeah. God created the world and yeah. has left the building, if you will. Yeah. You know? yep. <laughs> and less as to our own design. Just bottom the clock up and let it run. Right, right. The watchmaker argument. Yeah. And I think that's how people view it. And it's only the, uh, the religious folk and maybe this goes, I, 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 don't know, I can't speak for the religion, certainly the, the Jewish, uh, we see it as, no, it's in both of us. It's, it's God's controlling everything. Mm-hmm. Yes, God is up in his residence, if you will, is Lamaila above, but God is dwelling amongst us. Mm-hmm. And that's why we have to be so careful. Okay, and then it says, Mi avi. So Rashi here says, where's our father, uh, house, father's house? Haran. Meshul Latif was the uh, birthplace, maybe, or custom. Rambam fights this. Ramban, excuse me, fights this. He says, absolutely not from Or Kasdim. He, uh, he was coming from uh, Aram Naharayim, and that's, he, he proves it because he sends his kids to uh, Padan Aram, excuse me. Padan Aram, he sends, he's, he's going to Padan Aram. He doesn't go to Or Kasdim. So, what are you talking about? He says, Or Kasdim, he was just a stopping uh, place for him. And so he, he goes to war against on, on that. And then he, uh, okay, so then he says, the Shitty Billy that spoke to me. In other words, when God spoke to me for my needs, and, uh, okay, and it swore to me at Benimitarim, between the pieces, when I was a mere 70 years old, and now I'm 137. So it's been a long time. Okay. So now what happens? He says, Vim Lotove, uh, now he says to him, Vim Lotove. But let's say this woman, you went and you find a woman and she doesn't desire to come after you. Okay, what happens? Benikita, uh, I lost the place, sorry. Benikita Mishwatizot. I am cleansing you, uh, as they put it. I am, uh, it should be, I am absolving you. There you go. I am absolving you of this Shavuah. You no longer will be part of the Shavua, and Rashi says, and what's the Shavua of Kachlo, the Isha, uh, and, and you can take a woman from the children of and daughters of Aner, Eshkol, the Mamre. So if, the, if you go to my, my homeland, and my family doesn't want to send you a girl, or if she doesn't decide that, she, if she decides she doesn't want to go, guess what? I cleanse you, I absolve you of the Shavua, 
And now she, the, my son can marry the kids, the daughters of Anav Eshkol and Mamre, one of those three, because they're B'nai bread anyway. They're, they're, they already have a covenant with me. And not, not a problem. Rock at B'nai. Only my son, Lotashif Shama. Do not bring my son there. He can't go. And now Rosh says, why say Rock? Because Rock is a mute. Rock is an exclusion. Only my son, my son can go, but Yaakov will be able to go. Mm, mm. No, so my grandson can go. My son is a considered a Korban Ola. Wow. He was considered a, a totally burnt offering wow. because he went up to the Keda. And so, and, and an Ola cannot leave the confines of, of Yerushalayim. So in this case, all of Israel becomes his confines. Mm. Okay. And so that's why he says he can't go. Fine. So um, the second of the ends off with Vyasim and Eved at the door. So uh, the servant put his hand Tachat Yerech Yaakov Avram Adonav under the thigh of Avram uh, his, uh, his uh, master. Vyishavalo he swore to him all the that on this matter. So that's how the, that's the second Leah. So what we see is that he wants to marry his son off, and if you go back, that's the whole thing. So if you just go back to uh, to Art Scroll. Uh, on page 109. It says, the mission to find a wife for Isaac. So Avram's own productive life was coming to an end. Yitzchak was 37 years old when Sarah died, and Avram was troubled by the thought that had Isaac been slaughtered at the Akeda, he would have had no children to see him. Fine. Like, that's what I said originally. Yeah. Therefore, Avram took, now took it upon himself to provide for the future by finding a wife for Yitzchak. But Yitzchak made had to be a worthy successor to his mother. She had to be the next Sarah of the Jewish people, a, a woman who would, not only, who would not be only a wife and a mother, but a matriarch. Mm. To find such a woman, Avram turned toward his ancestral home to, to his and Sarah's family. Remember, Sarah was his niece. In the mm. And to make this selection, he dispatched Eliezer. More than a trusted servant, Eliezer was the quote-unquote Rosh Yeshiva, of Avram's household, the one who taught the disciples and exemplified Avram's way of life. Only such a person had the stature and understanding to be worthy of the heavenly assistance needed to chart the next epic of the development of the Jewish people. Okay? Oh. Okay? Oh, yeah. So what happens is, you just leave other, thank you. So what happens is we see that. Uh, Avram sends him for a specific reason, and he is, is good because he wants him to go and get it, and Eliezer is going to follow that mission. Okay, so let's do the, let's start the third Leah. We won't finish it, but let's start the third Leah. 110. Ah. So, chapter, uh, verse 10 now. Yeah. So, what happens? So, the servant took with him 10 camels. From the camels of his master, and he went, and all of the good of his master in his hand. And so, now how, how is that possible? In his hand. He takes all the good, from, Avram had such a little amount. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Rashi says, it's not, uh, you have to understand something. He says, uh, I'll call it Shalom. What happened was, uh, Avram had written a document, a, a gift document to, Avram, to Yitzchak that he's giving him everything. So he's giving him the will, as it were. Mm. So that they should be desirous to send their daughter. Okay, so I'm showing you, here's what Avram has. He gives him the list. Here's what Avram has. And this is why we want your daughter to come. He's a rich guy, in other words. He's not a poor schlepper. Okay? Then also, why does that say Migmale Adonav from the camels of his master? So Raj explains, they were recognizable from other uh, camels because they, were, they had on them muzzles. So they wouldn't be able to eat from the people's, you know, from, from the fields, sides of the fields. So what happens? He goes, he gets up and he goes to Aram Narayim, which is El Ir Nahor, to the city of Nahor. Okay, so that's, now that's why, again, the Rambam says, the Ramban says that 
You said, you, Rashi said, his homeland was Orkazdim. And yet we see he's going to Aram Naharayim. Aram Naharayim is not near Orkazdim. So you can't be right. Okay. Now what happens, so they get the Vayavrech HaGemalim Michutz Le'er El Be'er Mayim. So now the camels kneel down from outside the city at the at the well of water, the eight Arab toward the evening time, the eight Seder Shavuot to the time that the women, the water, well the women, talking about the women, will go out to draw water. Okay, so we're going to we're at a well, and they they're relaxing as we're the uh, they settle down there. By Omar, and so here Eliezer gives a whole tefillah. He says, Hashem Elokei Adoni Avraham. Okay, Hashem, the, the uh, my servant, the God of my servant Avram, uh, my master Avram, Hakre Nalafanayom, please, uh, okay, uh, please, what is it called? Uh, happen, make it happen before me. Arrange it before me today. Biase Ches said, Im Adoni Avram, and do kindness with my master Avram. He's saying. To do, he's setting, he's saying to, he's asking Hashem, let's set it up. I'm, I'm going to give you the way that I know the girl is, uh, is good. So he says, uh, Behold, I am standing by the well of water. So the daughters of the city, of the, of the daughters of the men of the city, Yod sold the show of mine. They're going to, they're going to come out to draw the water. And now the young girl, Asher Marila. That I say to her, I'm going to tell her, please uh, tilt your your uh, your drug so I can drink. Vamra, and she will say, stay drink. The gam gemalechashken. Also, I'm going to water. I'm going to give water to your camels. She. Uh, this will prove that she is the one that is my, your uh, servant. Yitzchak, uva eda, and in that I will know kesita chesed im adoni that you have done chesed kindness with my master. So here, what he's expecting is for the girl. He's going to see a girl, and that he thinks is good, and he's going to say, "Okay, uh, could I please have some water?" She's going to say, "Here you go, here's some water." And, he, and not only you, but I'm going to feed your camels. That's ten camels. He has ten camels with him. I'm going to feed. I'm going to Give them all the, the water. Okay? That's Meshuggah. But okay. But that's, why was he looking for? For kindness. Uh -huh. Now, why would he have to look for kindness? Why can't he rely upon Yitzchak for kindness? His wife should have it too. Because Yitzchak was Midas Hadin. His what? Midas Hadin. Uh -huh. he, he was a black and white guy. Uh -huh. So he has to temper that uh -huh. with kindness. So he's coming from Avram's background. Avram was a guy who was into kindness, okay? So now he wants to make sure that this girl is going to continue that on. Let's face it, a Rebbitzin has to be willing to do all these things, go bend over backwards to try to please everybody. Anybody who's ever come to my house knows my Rebbitzin does that, okay? Uh, you're a vegetarian, you this, you that, whatever it is, she makes those dishes up. and But that's so you have to do. You have to be. A, you have to have that sort of disposition. I remember when I was looking for a wife. So that my Rosh Hashiva said to me, uh, I'm, I'm Al, excuse me, said to me, you know, if you get somebody who doesn't want to entertain, doesn't want to be a Rebson, ah. he said you can be. You could. You could have some success, but you won't be successful because she'll be miserable, which make you miserable. <laughs> so you have to get somebody who actually wants to do this sort of work. And that's a special, a very special woman. But when you get her, you don't let her go. Okay, so that that's what you you have to know what you're buying into. So that's what this girl had to do. So that's why he says that would prove that she is, as Rashi says, gemil chasadim, and that she could enter and she would have the uh, the privilege to enter into the house of Avram. Mm -hmm. And okay, yeah. so what happens? Uh, actually, we'll stop there. Okay. We all know that you'll have to come back, ne back next year for the rest of the story. <laughs>